This happened to me last night, at my father's house. Be me, hanging out with dad because, why not? He's cool and always watches sci-fi movies with me. Have uneasy feelings since I've arrived. Realize I've felt this way the past couple of times I was there. Watching Prometheus, when we hear a loud bang outside. Before this next part, I should explain that my father lives in a very small house. The front doors go straight into the living room, connected to a kitchen with no wall separating it. One door goes into a bedroom from the kitchen, and another door goes into the middle room with one wall that has a single window, and two doors at the back of the room, one to the bathroom and one to the laundry room. The laundry room has a door that opens into the backyard. Dad freaks out, turns TV and Blu-ray player off immediately. Tells me to get into middle room and huddle between a dresser and a wall. He turns off every light in the house and hands me a thick piece of wood. I suggest we see what's going on outside, and he tells me no. Stay out of the light, son. What the fuck, that JPEG? Uneasy feeling from when I arrived intensifies tenfold. Asks dad what he means. He doesn't answer. Sitting in silence in the middle room for about five minutes... Start hearing voices coming from the window in the bathroom. Do you hear that, son? Nod my head and focus on the direction of the bathroom. Pitch black so I can't see anything past the stick in my hands. Talking disappears. Start looking for my dad's machete. Every time I get close to a window, my dad tells me to get away from it. Every time I step into a patch of light, my dad tells me to get out of the light. We both get back into position between the wall and dresser. Begin hearing taps and scrapes against the back door. Ask dad what that is. He shushes me. Sit like this for what seems like hours. After a period of time I couldn't keep up with, my dad begins telling me about weird things happening to him. He says he's been seeing things in the woods behind his house. And when he takes pictures, he sees faces says the voices outside is a regular occurrence, and he's used to it. Says his spoons disappeared for about a week, then reappeared in the exact same spot he had seen them last. Tells me about times where it sounds like something is on his roof, and when he goes to check, nothing is there. Talks about experiences where, when him and his girlfriend leave, they come back with the dresser drawers open and their clothes all over the ground, soaking wet. The last thing he tells me is this, word for word. There are entities here, son. I've seen them. I noped the fuck out, told him I wanted to leave, packed my things, and got the fuck out of there. I still think there are things he hasn't told me, because while I was leaving, he kept saying, Please hurry up, son. Please hurry. I noped out so fast I forgot to grab both of my movies and my favorite hat. Sorry for the anticlimactic ending, but that's what happened. It was terrifying, to say the least. Granddad told me about his great uncle before he passed a few years ago. Not really paranormal, but the idea kind of stuck with me. Reminds me of some of the things that pop into my head, but I'd already be committed if I were crazy, I guess. Great uncle was a pharmacist, Granddad remembered meeting him a few times when he was really young. Parents started sending them to their rooms when he stopped by, only once or twice, but he heard them arguing. He died before Granddad turned 10, went to the funeral, nothing really interesting happened, but it was a closed casket. Years later, asks his granddad about brother, his great uncle. Doesn't want to talk about it, keeps pestering and gets smacked around. More years later, his granddad is on his last legs. Asks him again. Says, stop pestering the dad and let him go in peace. His granddad dies. My granddad asks his dad what happened. Shortly after the wake, so he's in the mood to reminisce. 
says his great uncle helped support granddad when he started his family. Was a pretty normal guy, but got weirder and more distant over the years. Went to visit him once, and his house was pretty much empty, but there was a makeshift shed that was boarded up behind. Asked great uncle about it. He dodged a question and got angry. They started fighting and they didn't see him for a while. Story kind of went around aimlessly like this, so I'll cut short. When he died, my granddad asked around what was going on. Basically, he thought people turned into demons after sundown and were trying to break into his house. House was too big, so he made the shed to sleep and ride in, boarded it up every night to protect himself. One day, he wrote a note to his brother saying goodbye, that the demons were seeping in through the cracks like a sludge. It was barely comprehensible. Smashed the door open and ran out went missing. A few days later, his body was found in the woods, eaten by wild dogs, but abandoned. Hence, closed casket. Could have just been my granddad fucking with me, but I don't know. I miss you, fucker. Be me, 11, maybe 12 years old. Have a sleepover with a couple of buddies because kids are friends. Set up telescope in backyard. Six stars and on, spot something that looked like a shooting star. But shooting stars don't zigzag. Zigzag and on, bruh, sick. Head inside for Vidya. Old school WWF on N64. Buddies fall asleep. I stay up and create cool wrestlers. Gotta pee. Get up and head through dark hallway and stop by doorframe to mudroom. Feel eyes. You know the feeling. The fuck is that? Look up in top corner of frame. A la mouth. Fucking note my brain out. White face, no nose or mouth. Large oval eyes, black, empty, and stares into your soul type of shit. Tilts its head at me. Go to scream and wake up next to buddies. N64 and TV opposite side of the room. What the fuck, man? There's more and I'm just bored and high enough to continue. Continuing because I want to go play Destiny. 7th grade. Rash on head, top of skull. Itchy, eventually rash becomes a sore. Go to doctor. They say it's a tumor attached to my skull. Make appointments. They remove it with an electric needle. Pretty much carve it out of my head. Fairly painless. Tingly. They take it away. Won't let me see it. Avoid questions. At front desk. Glance outside and see the doctor that carved it out. Sitting on curb, smoking a cigarette. Sobbing. What the fuck, Dr. Anon? Never see what they took out. Never hear about it again. Okay, this is the long story. This place is my aunt's house. She has lived in the desert her whole life, in the middle of nowhere. She has a restaurant in there, but the story is about her son. Her son is one of the 33 miners that were trapped in a mine in the Chilean desert. When that happened, I barely knew him, but I was close, so I went with my aunt to wait until they got them out. They were trapped inside the mine for 69 days. When he got out, they made them stars, so I didn't see him in a long while. But one summer, we meet again in that house in the desert. We drank some beers and he told me they weren't alone down there. There was someone else in there, living underground. We call them by many names, but we are never sure about them. Normally, you only see a shadow or something going very fast, but he seemed quite sure. All miners say the same, that they weren't alone down there, but they brush it off with a typical response. We knew our families were waiting for us, but he told me that something lives down there and they don't want to be disturbed. Inside the mine, they could hear them at first. They obviously thought they were going crazy, but they felt that something was watching them from the dark. The days passed underground and despair got to them. Some wandered in the dark, and there is when they started to notice them. Talking about it keeps them sane. Somehow they managed to remain calm and rational. Miners are used to the dark and the confinement, but nothing could prepare you for this. 
I'll never be sure if this happened. I wasn't down there. But he talked about them like they were very real. And they are still there. He told me that they were afraid at first. And with time, they got used to the presence of those little people of the underground. I haven't seen my uncle since. Then, I find out about the Atacama humanoid. And it made perfect sense to me. Be me. Be small. Hanging out with friend from school. Her dad is a cool rad single parent, so he lets her do pretty much whatever. Trying to beat the desert optional boss in Kingdom Hearts. The one with the bubble shield and the scimitars. That one, yes. Phone rings. Anon, go take it. I can't pause. Yes, you can, you fucker. Take the phone. Hey, I'm... Friends. Mom. Tell her I'll be dropping by today. Still in... Name of neighborhood? Right? Uh, yeah. Sweet. Don't stay up late. <laughs> they must be divorced and she just wanted to pop by to say hi and stuff. Friend asks who his phone. Your mom? Ha ha ha, fuck off. Not funny. Who was it? Literally your mother. She's coming by later today. Her mother was a mentally ill, violent alcoholic. Presumed dead years ago when they found her clothes, wallet, and a suicide note, plastified, inside a duffel bag and a fishing net in the middle of the sea. Call her father. Call the cops. Call her ID from a gas station on the other side of the country. Police deliver a sketch of the woman who used the phone based on bartender and security cams. It's the fucking mother. No car. She walked through the actual fields surrounding the station and left the same way. No one knows where she is. It's been over a decade and nothing happened. But my friend still has nightmares with this. B-17. Home alone as parents are out of town. I have a dream where I'm sitting in a greenhouse. About to leave greenhouse when suddenly... This girl pulls my arm and stops me from leaving. She looks terrified. Wait, 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 she says. She looks like she's listening for something. After a few moments, she goes, Okay, go, go. Wake up and check the front door. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I shoot awake and without even thinking, run to the front door. It's slightly ajar. Close it and lock it. Maybe five seconds later, the doorknob jiggles. My face went. Hid in my room as I called the police. I didn't know if I was locking someone out or locking someone in. They searched my house and around my neighborhood and found nothing. No nope. Tired of all the bullshit occult threads dominating X. Here's something that still bothers me. Have work in the morning, so I set an alarm for 6 a.m., Place my phone on the nightstand, shut off the light, and wrap myself up in a cocoon of blankets. Doze off, and my phone starts going off. I knew there was no way it was already time to get up for work, so I reach my hand toward my phone on the nightstand to turn off my alarm. As I'm reaching over, I feel my fingers run through something that feels like hair. My heart was beating so hard I thought it was going to come out of my chest. I jumped out of bed so quick and bolted toward my light, flipped it on, and there was nothing in my room. I figured I must have imagined it. I walk over to my phone to shut it off, and as I look down at my phone, there are two strands of dark hair intertwined in my fingers. I'm blonde. I'd never been so fucking scared in my life. I still don't know who or what was two inches from my face that night. Hang out with friends. Have known each other for years. One of them brought Jay along. Wasn't really part of our group, but we still knew each other for years. Supposedly, Jay wasn't doing too well. My friend thought we should hang out with him. Things are going well. Some drinking, some joking. Wandering around aimlessly. B is with us. I pretty much look up to this guy. Incredibly funny, witty as fuck, and can talk himself out of any situation. Not a Chad, but still excels in any social situation. Except for Jay, everyone is having a good time. Crossing a highway bridge. Suddenly, 
Jay jumps off the bridge without any warning. Hear car horns. Everyone is shocked and screaming. B, in the back, whispers to himself, He didn't fly so good. Turn around in disbelief. Can clearly tell he tries to suppress his smile. Realization hits. Remember all the times he would talk people into helping him. All the times he would get people to do exactly what he wants. He was always manipulating people. Remember him once saying to me, You just gotta tell people what they want to hear. His eyes literally scream, I have been caught. He is a psychopath. A feeling of pure dread. Snap out of it. And due to the ensuing chaos, forget about it for the rest of the day. Imagine talking to a friend and then realizing that it's a stranger just pretending to be him. Imagine that stranger looking at you like he knows you realized his secret. That's how those few seconds felt like. Back in 2006, it was like 8 or 7, running a really bad fever. Parents don't know what to do. Call 999. They say, put him in a bathtub full of cold water. So they do. Remember just being super cold, and then, all of a sudden, like I was burning hot, instantly go unconscious. There's this pop somewhere in the middle of my brain. I quote-unquote open my eyes. I'm floating about two feet above my body, looking up at the ceiling. But it's not a ceiling anymore. It's hard to describe. I'm looking at some kind of desert. Looks almost like pictures of Mars. Really bleak. Seems to go on forever. Then, there's a click. And an explosion a little ways away. Watch the smoke and fire for what feels like hours. Then, I feel another pop, and I'm back in my body. Parents rush me to A&E, and &E, end up having a super bad case of the flu. Years later, in Afghanistan, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Humvee is keeping to a pre-designated path to try and avoid IEDs. We're just in a random spot in the desert, and all of a sudden, I get this terrible feeling. Tell driver to stop. He does. Asks what's wrong. I tell him there's a bomb up ahead. They check it out. Sure enough, there's fucking signs of a fresh dig. It's enough that it would have fucking vaporized us remember the night in the bathtub have absolutely no explanation for it fuck this is terrifying just the thought of what he's looking at I mean what could spook the spooker